Praise the Lord. God will take care of us. And as we look today, we'll recognize that as we look at Psalm 37. Psalm 37, we're going to look at, we're going to look at one verse today. I'm going to read two. And we're going to look at many other verses, not just this passage in Psalm. Uh, but uh, the two we're going to look at in Psalm, we're going to look at them one, today, one this morning and one tonight. Those are the verses number 23 and 24. Psalm 37, verse number 23 and 24. Let me read both of those, and then we'll go back and, and cover verse number 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Let's pray. Father, we ask your guidance now as we look at this passage and see what you uh, have for us to help us understand um, our own selves and understand you. Lord, I pray that you would uh, direct us in knowledge, understanding, and then, Lord, uh, apply it to our own lives. Maybe not right now, maybe not today as we're sitting here, but as we look at for the future and look at daily that we would recognize that you are involved in our lives uh, as Christians and you want the best for us and you help us out uh, as we go along in this life. Direct our hearts today, Lord, and know our minds need to hear and understand. I pray that our hearts would be changed. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Paul. I'm sorry, I got the wrong notes here. Paul was dealing with separation <laughs> in Sunday school, but we're not in Sunday school. Uh, here we see the, 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 probably a very familiar passage of Scripture. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and, and he delighted in his way. I'm going to look at this, uh, break it down some, uh, to see, uh, because we can look at this and we read it and say, okay, I got it. It's almost a... Almost, uh, um, like I said, sometimes we get familiar with things, and we, if we were reading this passage, we just read over it. Oh, I remember that. I know that, and I go on. But what is he really telling us here? When when you think of the steps of a good man ordered by the Lord, are you are you what comes on in your mind? Is it every step I take? I mean, we sing a song. Each step I take, uh, the Lord is is with me, and that's true. But there's more to it than just step by step. And it's not like you're climbing the stairs or up in a ladder. If God wasn't with you when climbing up a ladder, you might fall. The ladder might break. All kinds of things. But that's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about step, just a plain step by step. And, and so we want to look and see. I'm going to look at this. Uh, like I said, break it down. But I'm going to look at the steps. Not the steps necessarily of a good man. We'll look at good man. But the steps that are ordered by the Lord. And then we'll look at the good man. And then we're going to look at uh, he delighted in his way. And so first of all, the steps. The steps are not, like I said, it's not just a, a, a walking steps. The word uh, can mean that. But the word in, in the Hebrew word also means going or goings. It, he's, he's talking about our lives. He's talking about the way we live. And uh, we need to recognize it's, it's not just a step-by-step -step walk, but the totality of our lives as we live this life as Christians. Go over to the book of Proverbs. We'll see that I think the Bible only uses this, this word three times in the whole Bible. Of course, it's all in the uh, Old Testament. But I want to look at another one in Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20 And verse number 24. And uh, the writer here, probably Solomon, he says, uh, Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? All right, now the, the, a man's goings. Now that word goings are the steps. Okay, the same word that is translated as the steps of a good man, the steps. So the goings of the Lord in this particular verse He's, he's talking about uh, not just the way we live, but the fact of God creating us. 
and how a man actually is able to live, all right? How many of us could create or make another human being by creation? I know we know we can make another human being to get married and all that stuff, but uh, what about the, the, the fact that, that God gives us the ability to eat? And we eat, some people would say we, we live to eat, but we actually eat to live. So we eat and, and we drink and God uses that food to make the energy for our bodies to continue being alive. And just, just thinking about that just makes me wonder, I don't get it. I, I know my heart beats, but why? And that's why, that's the end of that verse. He says, uh, how, he says, how can a man then understand his own way? Look, God keeps us alive. And it's not man and it's not the doctor. It's God who keeps you living. So our, our goings, our steps of this physical existence are set up by the Lord. But when we look at that word back in Psalm 37, we see the steps that God orders, the steps or the way we live, the way we go. And keep in mind that he's talking about a good man. I'm, I'm going to talk about a good man in a little bit, but the steps of the good man. And so when we, when we think about that, it's the way, the steps are the way the good man chooses to live his life. Okay? The steps of a good man. The, the, the good man is not going to live in a way that is not pleasing to God. God would basically not allow that person to continue living if he's going to be a bad example. Okay, so the way of life that we choose, we, we need to recognize that these steps or this life, these goings are uh, ordered because we allow God to direct our choices. All right, it's the choices we make that help us uh, live uh, the way God wants. So the steps are our life, our goings. Now it says that those steps or that life is ordered by the Lord. Now this is a, this word ordered. Normally you would think that this this means um, step by step. God says this step first, that step first, that, or this is what He's going to order my life in this manner. The word ordered is not just to mean that he has planned out each part of my life. It's the idea of being um, secure. I want you to see another place where this word is found. Go back to Genesis chapter 41. And in this passage we find Joseph speaking to Pharaoh. And if you recall the, the uh, account that Pharaoh had these dreams about uh, cattle. First of all, there were fat cattle, seven fat cows and healthy cows uh, were feeding, and then he saw seven lean cows, ones that were hungry, ate up the, the good cows. Later on, in another dream, he saw that uh, seven good ears of corn were eaten by seven lean ears of corn. And it just he didn't get it. He, didn't, he believed there's, they meant something. So Joseph now is, has explained to him the, the uh, fact that there's going to be seven years of plenty, and then after that great plenteous seven years, he's going to have, there's going to be seven years of famine. Now look what he says in chapter 41, what he tells, jo tells Pharaoh about this in verse number 32. He says, and for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. I like that. Uh, it, English throws us off. If he doubled it twice, what? how many times? Four, right? Well, it's, it's in, the, in the Hebrew language. It's, it's an emphasis meaning, meaning just twice, but he doubled it. He doubled the meaning. He gave him two dreams. 
And because he gave him true, true dreams, he was making sure Pharaoh understood that this is a fact that is going to happen. Okay? So he says, uh, he says this, doubled under Pharaoh twice, it is because the thing is established by God. Established, that's the order. Okay? The, the thing established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. So this establishing here, the word is the same ordered word in ver chapter 37 of or Psalm 37, uh, verse number um, 23. It is established by God. It is set in, uh, you could say set in stone. It is made sure. Now, uh, go back to uh, Psalm 37 and look at verse number uh, 18. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. In the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke, shall they consume away. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. God sets up the man's ways, the good man's ways. God establishes them. And here he's talking about how God would take care of them. Go over to the book of uh, 2 Samuel, chapter 22. 2 Samuel, Chapter 22, David, as he, in, in, in 2 Samuel 22, we see a, a, a psalm, and it, it's, it's, you can find it also in the book of Psalms, but I wanted you to go to 2 Samuel, uh, where we see what he is really uh, pr praying or crying out to God. Look at verse number 37. He says, Thou hast enlarged my steps under me so that my feet did not slip. Now, I'm, I'm relating this to the steps of the good man that are being ordered or established by the Lord. Now, go back to, in, in this chapter, go back to verse number 18. He says, He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. So they, he says, these, these enemies, they prevented me. They went before me and they stood in my pathway trying to stop me from the way that I should be going. But God came and he rescued me out of them, away from them. He says, the Lord was my stay. So the idea, as we go on, as, as you, you continue in in the passage, but go down to um, verse number 36. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation and thy gentleness hath made me great. Keep that in mind. We'll see that again tonight. Thy gentleness hath made me great. God's gentleness. God's care for us. Uh, can you imagine a mother uh, taking care of her baby by just dropping him on the floor or mistreating him or laying him not letting... We saw a family going into a, a doctor's office with a baby the other day and it's like it was a cold day and it was starting to rain up in Turlock and the baby just wasn't wrapped up very much and we thought why isn't that baby taken well they were probably comfortable the baby was probably comfortable I don't know but um, I, I'm not saying that they were mistreating the baby but God treats us like a mother treats his her children her babies with tender care. It is the gentleness of God. Now, go back to verse 37. This is, God's, this is God's heart toward us. And so what David says, Thou hast enlarged my steps under me so that my feet did not slip. The idea that I see here is, as I've never worn them, these, these things, but I have seen them on TV.
TV and people using them, snowshoes. I, I have walked in the snow without snowshoes, and the, and the snow has gone all the way up to my hips, practically, and you can't move. So they made these snowshoes to, big, to be big. They enlarge our steps. Okay, so the idea is God. God has uh, has not made my my stride long. David's saying he's saying he he made me to live in my life in a way that I am resting on Him. He has enlarged my steps and the life I live. I know as long as I depend on Him, depend on God, I am not going to fall as easily as I I won't fall if I continue living uh, relying on Him. But my problem, and I would venture to say it's your problem too, okay? My problem is that I still have this old sinful man, this old nature that is in me, and sometimes I allow him, and in your case it might be a her, an old man a her, uh, might come up and do something or bring me into a situation where I stumble. And that's my fault. It's not God's fault. But God enlarges my step. God establishes my life. God gives me the security if I will rely on Him. So the steps of that good man are established by God. Go to Joshua chapter 3. Again, we'll see this, this same word about uh, uh, being established or uh, strong in what happened when the children of Israel crossed the Jordan River. Joshua chapter 3, look at verse number 17. Now remember that what was supposed to happen. Joshua told the, the priest to carry the ark, and as soon as they stepped into the water, the waters were going to divide. The waters that the, the, were downstream were just going to continue on and trickle down and, and fade out. The waters from upstream were going to back up like a dam without, <laughs> without any uh, uh, earth or cement blocking it. It was just going to, they were going to dam up and they just build upon a heap. And so the priests were to walk in this ground. This is what's happened, verse 17. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm. There's that word. There's that word ordered by the Lord or established by God. This, they stood strong and firm on dry ground. Who put them there? Who put the dry ground? Have you, have you ever moved water out of, out of the way, out of, uh, off of the uh, uh, dirt? When you get the water out of the way, what's left? Mud. They're not standing on mud. God gave them firm, dry ground. Uh, in the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground, until all the people were passed clean over. So God made them stand firm. They were secure because God gave them that ability. They weren't going to fall because God was with them. God established the dry ground for them as uh, they walked over. So the steps are ordered. The life, the goings, the the way of life is established by God because a man is good. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Now, what is a good man? We know that the Bible says there is none righteous. No? How many? Not one. There is none righteous. But Jesus said this, and the, the uh, uh, rich young ruler came to him and says, Good master, what must I do to, be, uh, to go into heaven? And he turned, Jesus turned to him and he says, let me, let me read it to make sure I say the right thing. He says, there is none good but one, and that is God. Okay, so God is the only good one. The good man then, who can be a good man? Now we know from what we've studied, what we've understood the Bible teaches, when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, God places his goodness, his righteousness upon us. And so we are, because of our faith in Christ, faith in God who provided Jesus Christ, we are good men. We'll go back to 2 Samuel again and see what David says about himself. And this is amazing when you know what David has done. 
and what David did in his life, even though he was uh, a man after God's own heart, we know that he sinned and he murdered. I had somebody murdered, so he was guilty of it. Second Samuel chapter 22 again. He was guilty of murder, guilty of adultery. And so you think, what's so special about David? What is special about David is the same thing that's special about you and me. We put our faith in Jesus Christ, God places his righteousness on us, and when he looks at us, hey, we're clean. But we're not. But in his eyes, because of faith, we are clean. So David recognized that way back in the Old Testament. When did David say, I trust Jesus Christ as my Savior? Zero. Okay, never did. But he had faith in God. Okay, look at 2 Samuel chapter 22. Look at verse number 21. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. Now, in, in, if, if he did not have faith in God, there would be no righteousness. So if God rewarded him according to his righteousness, what would happen? <laughs> God would, if God rewarded us according to our natural righteousness, we'd be dead. There's no hope. Okay? But he says, of my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, hath he recompensed me. What? It's what, it's what God has done for him what God has placed upon him. <coughs> for I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. I was also upright before him and have kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore the Lord hath recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in his eyesight. Aha! See? In his eyesight. David knew he was a sinner. David knew he was wicked. But according to God, looking at him, he saw God's own righteousness because of his faith. David recognized he was a sinner. He knew it, but when he says this, he's saying, this is what God has done to me, what God has done for me. So, in David's case, he is a good man by virtue of his faith. So his life, his way was established by God. When we keep our focus on God as Christians, as good men, we keep our focus on Him, God directs our steps. God orders or establishes our life. We depend on Him and He continues to guide us and even though we might make bad choices, if we will rely on the Holy Spirit to direct us, to give us understanding of what choices to make, you know, our lives would be a lot simpler because God is directing every part of our life. And that's up to us to let Him direct our thoughts so we can make good choices. So the steps of a good man are ordered or established by the Lord. And then he goes on in Psalm 37, in the same verse, and he delighteth in his way. Now, I don't know about you, but when I look at that, I have a hard time trying to figure out right, right just from that. He delighteth in his way. Who's he? Who's his? You know, I, I, I see that it can be three things. Three, three. Four things, okay. <laughs> now, I'm talking about the spaces, okay? <laughs> Four things, okay. It's either talking about God delights in God's way, or it's talking about God delights in the good man's way, or it's talking about the good man delighting in God's way, or the good man delighting in his own way. All right? Now, I'm going to cover these and try to narrow it down. Uh, I think when, if we think about God delights in his own way, that seems to be just a, kind of an ob obvious thing. Because even when God created, he was pleased with his cre creation. He would delight it in his creation. You might think, wait a minute, when God created man, uh, so many of them, a thousand years later, he had to destroy man. 
uh, because they were so corrupt. And God said, well, let's go look at it. Go over to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. And by his, his own words, you would think, well, wait, wait a minute. He's not delighting in what he did. Well, he's not delighted with the way man t turned himself into what man did. But well, look at verse number uh, 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. And so it, it, you, uh, on the surface you think, well, maybe he's not pleased with him creating man. But if you go back to chapter 1 and look at the last verse of chapter 1, the, by, by the way, chapter 1 is God's creative uh, work in that first week. Okay, and Then he describes it and goes into more detail beginning in chapter 2. But chapter 1 tells about the first week of creation. So uh, when he was done on uh, day 6, that's where we are. Verse number 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So man was very good. God was, God delighted in what he did. So, so I don't think God would tell us uh, something out of chapter or Psalm 37 to say uh, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and uh, God delights in God's way. Why would that even talk about it? Okay, so then, so we look at it another way. Um, is it talking about uh, man, the good man, uh, delighting in his own way? Well, we might say, well, if it's a good man, then as long as that man is good, he will delight in his own way. So why even, why even point that out? What about man delighting in God's way? Well, sometimes it, it does teach us that. Go over to Psalm 1. Man, good man, delighting in God's way. In Psalm 1, it says, Blessed, and that word also means happy. Blessed or happy is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his what delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. So, so yes, the, sometimes the good man, and yeah, we should delight in God's way. But again, in the context, I don't see that that's what God's telling us. I believe that we would focus more on God delighting in the good man's way. Because we depend on the Lord, because we allow God to establish, to give us the firm ground to stand upon and walk upon, we are delighting, we are delighting in His way because we trust Him. But he is happy about the way we are walking. He is continuing to give us strength. We go the way we go. We go the way God wants us to because we choose God's way. Look back. I want you to see three specific times in the Old Testament where uh, men have given other people choices to make. First of all, we think of Moses. When Moses stopped uh, and stopped, talked to the people, go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 30. And this is, of course, after God has given the law to the Israelites. God, God knows man. Okay, he knew man when he had to destroy the earth. He knew the Israelites. He at times called them uh, stiff-necked people. That doesn't mean they're the only stiff-necked people who have ever lived. Uh, we can be stiff-necked also. That means we are, are uh, stubborn. Okay, and we choose our way instead of God's way. But look what, and so because of that, because of God's understanding of man and knows man, he gave Moses the words to say. And so Moses stands before the people and tells them that they have a choice to make. Look at verse number 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, 
to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing, therefore, choose life, that both thou and I see may live. Choose life. But how, how are they going to choose life? By being obedient to what God has said. To be looking at the law, understanding the law, and saying, I'm going to walk in His way. I'm going to be that good man of Psalm 37, 23. I am going to allow God to establish my way. I'm going to choose life. We also have Joshua speaking to the many of the same people. Joshua chapter 24, the end of, end of the book of Joshua. Most of the people that uh, probably that Moses was talking with had died in the promised land as time goes on. Look what he says in verse number 15. He tells the people. He says, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land he dwelt. But as for me and my house, he, he doesn't say they use the word choose, but he says we will serve the Lord. I choose to serve the Lord. And so my house is going to follow God. We choose the right way. We choose life. Then the third person I see is Elijah as he's standing on the uh, Mount Carmel, 1 Kings chapter 18. And he stands there and talks to the people before the, uh, uh, the great contest was over. And he says, look at verse number 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long halt ye between two opinions? And here's the choice. If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And you know what the people did? Zip their lips. It says, and the people answered him not a word. Wow. Here's the choice. Moses said it. Joshua said it. And Elijah's given him the choice. Now listen. If God is God... Let him establish your goings. If God is the true God, follow him. Listen to him. He has given us the law. He has given you the choice between life and death, or good and evil. Choose good. Choose life. And here it is. What do they do? Nothing. Let's see if God is God. Let's wait. I don't get it. I don't get it. But he gave them the choice. Well, after the burning of the sacrifice, they said they turned to the Lord. But you just watch as the time went on, phew, they don't. They don't allow God to establish their steps. They don't allow God to order their goings. They make their own way. They choose their own way. Choose their own uh, uh, way of thinking. And look at uh, Isaiah. Go over to Isaiah 66. And, and this, how many people try to please God by doing? When in reality, we are going to please God when our hearts are right. Isaiah 66, look at verse number 1. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made. He says, what, did you build something for me? I made it. I gave you the ability. Okay. Uh, all those things hath mine hand made. And all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look. Even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit. 
and trembleth at my word. He's not talking about poor and monetary things. He's talking about humility. He's talking about a contrite spirit, a, 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 a submissive heart. He goes on to describe the people who think they're doing right, but they're so mixed up because they choose their way. He goes on, he says, He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. Now, he's talking about sacrifices. He that killeth an ox is, is as if, it's, it's him killing the ox is like if he killed a person, if he murdered a man. Why? Because he's, he's just doing something thinking God is being pleased. But his heart's all wrong. So he goes on, uh, the same, same idea in each of these. He that sacrificeth the lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. You can't, God didn't want dogs to be sacrificed to him. Those are dirty, filthy animals, he called them, uh, unclean. So he's not, he's, he's saying, he sacrifice a, a lamb and it, they might as well have killed a dog to me. He that offered an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. You drop the drink offering. Uh, God had them have, offer drink offerings. If you offered uh, pig's blood, swine's blood, God didn't want that. That was an unclean animal. By the way, they're unclean according to the Jews, and God said anything to be clean. You can eat anything because what I have cleansed, uh, don't call it common. So we're not talking about you can't eat pigs and you can't eat lobster. Okay, you can eat lobster if you can afford it. Um, he says, he that offered an oblation as if he offered swine's blood, he that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways and their soul delighteth in their abominations. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. That's exactly what those people did. And Elijah said, how long halt you between two opinions? They just kept their mouths shut. They have no answer. Uh, when I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes, and I chose, and, and they, and chose that in which I delighted not. So he delighted in the way of the good man. God delights in our way because we allow him to establish our lives, and we follow him through his word, and we stand strong on the truth of God's word <coughs> that Jesus said thy word is truth. Go to Proverbs 21 and we'll see, see the, the picture of what God is talking about right there in Isaiah 66. Proverbs 21 and verse number 27. He says, the sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. Now, what's an abomination? We talked about that. It means something that is very bad, abominable. Um, it, is, it is awful. The sacrifice of the wicked is awful. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind? The person who comes to God and says, here's, here's my offering to God, and it's pig's blood. Well, number one, at that, that time, it was the wrong thing. If even today we were afraid of bringing the wrong offering, we bring pig's blood. No, wait a minute. If you're truly afraid of being, bringing the wrong offering, make sure your heart's right. And that's why I look back at Cain and Abel. Cain offered from the fruit of the ground. And some people look at that and say, well, he, he, he offered the wrong offering. It wasn't, wasn't about that. It was about his faith. Abel offered a sacrifice of a, of a lamb, probably. Was it the lamb that God was happy with? No, it's the heart. It's the offering of the man's heart. God doesn't want blind obedience. Obedience that says, oh, this is what he says to do, so I'll do it, whether I like it or not. No, God wants us to know what we're doing, God wants us to live in the way He says because it's our desire to delight Him. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and He delighteth in His way. 
Now we're going to look tonight at though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, but they're all going to fall. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for giving us the minds to understand, to recognize the responsibility that we have to depend on you and let you establish our goings, establish our steps. That as we make our choices, we know that you are there behind them. The Holy Spirit giving us the wisdom to make those proper choices. Lord, help our hearts to be such that we are submissive to you, desiring to do your will so that you are delighted with our lives. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.